evening from New York. If it were up to Senator Max Baucus, middle class families would be forced, literally forced, to pay far more on health care than they already do right now. 13% of what they make could be deducted directly from their paychecks and mainlined to insurance companies, a so called max tax. It would be handed over to the very industry that has given the chairman of the Senate Finance Committee $3 million in campaign donations. And that 13% payroll deduction does not count co-pays and deductibles. See a doctor for any reason or get sick, and you can expect to pay nearly $12,000 a year more. Our fifth story in the countdown, only $3 million to Chairman Baucus in exchange for a bill in which the health insurance industry is guaranteed to make billions upon billions? We know what you are, Senator Baucus. We're now arguing about the price. Mr. Baucus today releasing his version of the health care reform bill that would give coverage to 30 million Americans who currently do not have any. First by extending Medicaid, the state federal insurance program for the poor. Next by providing government subsidies to modest income families and individuals to help them buy over-the-counter coverage. Only those who make less than 300 percent of the poverty level would fall into either of those categories. That means any individual making more than $32,500 or any family of four making more than $66,150 is on their own subject to the max tax of 13% for a family of $66,700 or $66,000, that is $700 a month they'd have to pay. If the families do not buy that insurance at that rate, they would be fined nearly half that amount. Some other nuggets in the Baucus bill, private insurers would be allowed to charge older individuals up to five times as much for coverage. You heard that right, five times Forget about pulling the plug on Grandma. Max Baucus wants to help the insurance industry steal her purse. Also in the bill, anyone with pre-existing conditions would go into a high-risk pool, but the provision says they would need to be uninsured for six months before they could even gain access to that pool. Exactly what you want for those who are already sick. And yet the Republicans on the Senate Finance Committee continue to distance themselves from the mess they helped to create here. Olympia Snow of Maine, the most important vote in the history of the world, apparently, today calling the bill a first step, but adding that a number of issues still need to be addressed. Mike Enzi of Wyoming saying in a statement, quote, the proposal released today still spends too much and it does too little to cut health care costs for those with health insurance. Democrats on the committee not liking it much better than that, including, obviously, the lack of the public option. There's got to be some discipline to other insurance companies that make them take seriously, not just competing with each other, but competing with somebody who, because they're nonprofit and don't have, you know, a marble headquarters and don't have to report to Wall Street and don't have to please uh, their shareholders because they don't have any, uh, that they, they're they can offer premiums at lower prices. Now, will that mean they put the private insurance industry out of business? Of course it doesn't. The bill pleasing no one but the insurance companies. They rallied today on Wall Street after Chairman Baucus revealed his bill. HealthNet up 3%, United Health Group 2.7, Humana 2.6, WellPoint 1.7, Aetna 1.6. Baucus himself apparently not aware of the provisions in his own bill. Millions of Americans today simply cannot afford quality health insurance. That's why it's time to act. And that's why this is our moment in history. This is our chance to reform health care in America. Our market ensures choice and competition in the health insurance market. So every American can find quality, affordable coverage that cannot be taken away. Taken away? The price will be taken out of your paycheck. Time now to call in our own Howard Feynman, senior Washington correspondent for Newsweek magazine. Howard, good evening. Hi, Keith. Individual mandates, no public option, squeeze the middle class, cost them more for health care than they're paying now. Did Senator Baucus kill off reform or did he just kill off his own political career today? Well, they're mad at him in the Senate mm -hmm. uh, at the highest levels of the Democratic leadership for a couple of reasons. First of all, they gave him a lot, a lot of time on the fool's errand to get Republican support. Uh, I'm told that, that this bill, such as it is, uh, Bacchus could have unveiled two months ago, and it would have been exactly what it was today. Now, people don't like it now. They wouldn't have liked it then. But he could have short-circuited his own process by two months and steady spent all this time behind closed doors uh, negotiating with people who didn't want to negotiate and ended up with the mess that you just described. Democrats don't like it, as you suggest, and are angry at him. Republicans were never going to support it in the first place, as you just noted. How can the White House possibly stand even next to it, let alone behind it? 
Well, they're not exactly full-throated in their enthusiasm, for sure. I mean, but you, you have to step back uh, and, and look at it from their perspective in that they are looking at the long haul here. They want to get something out of committee to match or change the other bill in the Senate from the so-called HELP Committee, which is a more liberal bill that has a public option in it, uh, so they can have more tools to sort of deal with as they come to conference. But the problem, Keith, is that this particular bill may not get out of its own mm -hmm. committee. By my count, there are at least two, maybe three or four Democrats who will vote against it. If that happens, this is a double waste of time because there will be no other bill beside the more liberal uh, Senate bill from the HELP Committee. What is the premise from Baucus's point? Of view. Is it the idea that he has to come up with something that pleases the insurance companies because, and the whole health sector because such a large percentage of him, of his fundraising as a small state senator, comes from that, and he has to put up this fight on their behalf and then f produce something so ridiculous that it's necessarily going to fold and lead the way for something else that might actually reform health care? What is, what is the thought process? Well, you're giving them way too much credit here, yeah, uh, maybe him. I, I, I think that he's probably thinking, and I haven't spoken to him today, so I don't know, but he's probably thinking, I'm sacrificing here, I'm just saying what's probably going on in his mm -hmm. mind, I'm sacrificing here to help ensure that a moderate bill will come out of the Senate. Because talking to Senate leaders, they forget about the Republicans. They now claim to be worried about being able to get 50 or 51 Democratic votes for any kind of reform plan at all even without the public option. In other words, things have slid so far, Keith, that if the Democratic leadership is to be believed, you know, even the, the, what they're looking at, it might not be conservative enough to get 50 Demo even 50 Democratic votes, which is shocking to me, but that seems to be where we are. Are the Democratic senators prepared for the, uh, the angry villagers with the, with the <laughs> you know, the proverbial uh, pitchforks and, uh, and flaming torches? Well, they, I think they should be, Keith, because there's a, this weird disconnect going on. On the Hill today, for example, more stories about how messed up the health care system is, mm -hmm. how people aren't getting coverage, how the cost of health care went up like 3.5% last year compared to a 1.5% drop in the overall cost of living. Uh, it, it, it's clearly not working properly. It clearly needs to be reformed, and yet the Congress seems to be moving backwards, not forwards at this point. I'd like the senators to come with me the next time I go see my dad in the hospital right now. Yeah. I don't mean to exploit his situation for any other yeah. purpose than to just say, uh, welcome. Uh, welcome to the world the way, way it actually is right at this moment. They have no earthly clue. Howard Feynman of MSNBC and Newsweek, who does. Great thanks as always, Howard. Thank you. Steve.